Uh, hello viewers, uh, welcome back to the Moose Mobile uh, Auto Repair Channel and today I have this uh, 2006 uh, Mazda 3 and it has the, the 2 liter engine and the other day uh, I had this vehicle in for a brake inspection and uh, I found that the, the rear calipers were seized and the pads were very low. I think approximately two millimeters. And the, and the mechanism for the parking brake on one side was completely seized. And the other side, it was just uh, uh, hanging up. So today I'm, I'm going to be showing you on, 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 on how to do the rear brakes, and including the calipers. Okay, let's get started. So now I'm going to jack this vehicle up. Uh, it's pretty uh, rusted on the lip on where the jacking points are. So I'm not able to to raise the vehicle there. So I'm going to have to uh, jack it up on the uh, suspension or, or on the frame. You put uh, a, a couple of uh, jack stands under. So pull the wheel off. So uh, right now we are gonna remove the the parking brake cable here. This is the <laughs> the mechanism. On, on one side it's binding, the other side is that completely seized. So you need to push in this piece here and get the parking brake cable out I used a, a vice grip to hang onto the ball and at the same time using the screwdriver to get it out. Just remove the cable. This one was easy to do. Now uh, a, a lot of times this uh, the bore in the hole here will be corroded badly and you will not be able to get the parking brake cable out so uh, in very rare cases you may have to cut this off and then r remove the parking brake then in 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 the worst case uh, possible <clears throat> if the caliper that you have on hand f from parts are remanufactured and there is a core on it uh, you will not be able to get the core back because you destroy the caliper by cutting this off so in case you guys are stuck trying to remove the parking brake and this is badly corroded you will need to cut it off and then you, you will be able to get it out then 
just having a look at the parking brake cable now it's partially seized but the the customer doesn't want to uh to fix the parking brake cables so we are just uh going to leave it because he doesn't use the the parking brake uh, anyways now uh, typically the next step would be to to crack open the line for the flex hose but in this case i don't have access here so it's gonna be a, a lot harder to do so uh i'm probably just going to uh, crack it open when i have the caliper off but it, it will be a lot harder this one is uh, is a 14 mil <coughs> it's on pretty tight and then we're gonna crack the bottom one open too So I'm going to crack the bottom one open. So you guys can see. And I'll just use a smaller wrench to uh, loosen everything up. Or you can use a ratchet even. And this won't fit. And let's just uh, grab a wrench. It's a 14 mil. And the bottom one as well. I'm already replacing the whole caliper, so there's no point of me really taking everything all apart uh, <laughs> one by one. The bolt. Hmm. And there's the other bolt. I'm probably just going to grab ourselves a, a hammer to get everything off here. You know. Barely anything left here on, on, on the outboard pad. So we're gonna take off the rotor here. And while you're here, you can have a look at the wheel bearing, see if it's okay. That doesn't sound too good. It's making noise. This bearing is not too good, making some noise. I'll give you guys a close up. So, this is a fourteen. to 14 so I'm using a, uh, a six point wrench here and it has the, the edges here 
it has like a like a flare type wrench so there's more grip i wouldn't use a standard wrench this is a chance you could uh, uh round off the hex here so i'm just going to uh, to crack open the uh, the line here a little bit Cracked it open. <coughs> and spray some uh, penetrating oil. Just keep on loosening it up until it gets more looser. And then don't open it up all the way until you are ready to install the new one. And so you want to clean everything up here, all the rust on the hub and stuff. Um, I probably have to uh, notify the customer about the hub. But I, I don't think he's going to do it uh, today. We might have to do it some other day. This is uh, this this takes dot three fluid. I'm just going to top it up, make sure the master cylinder is full before I remove the calipers because uh, I don't want to lose all the brake fluid while I'm replacing the uh, the caliper. So I want to make sure it's uh, topped up all the way. Spill it a little bit. Close it up for now. This takes a dot three. Now, uh, I'm not in favor of pinching the brake hose. Some people, they like to pinch the brake hose, but uh, that's not good because uh, there's a chance that you could damage the internals of the flex hose. And sometimes it it, it may work, but later in the future, it, it, uh, you will have problems. So I never, ever pinch the the brake hose ever because that's going to damage it so now we are just going to clean the hub uh, surfaces I want to clean the rust here on the uh, and where the bracket goes this is is part of the uh of the knuckle wire brush to clean the rust on the backing plate. I'm 
using the wire wheel. So now you want to clean the bolts for the caliper bracket. You want to clean all of the rust here. So now you want to spray everything down with brake cleaner once you cleaned everything here. So now I have the new caliper, so I'm going to take this apart here and remove the protective uh, covers for the slider pins and loosen them up so I can get, get to the bracket. That's on pretty tight. Remove the caliper bracket. So we're going going to lubricate the uh, the mounting points and where the pads uh, slide on. I'm using this uh, Permatex silicone brake lube. These ones do not have uh, clips on them. You just you, you install the pads directly onto the brackets. Now, as as for the caliper, uh, usually, usually I would like to remove the uh, the rubber bushings and lubricate the insides here because the corrosion normally builds up inside the caliper. So what I like to do is to remove the rubber uh, bushings. And take them out and lubricate lubricate the inside here because they corrode with time and if you don't lubricate it corrosion and rust will build up here and then 
cause problems with the uh, the slider pin. And you just take a flathead screwdriver and push them out carefully. And it just comes out like that. So now I like to lubricate these. Want to lubricate the inside here? And, uh, and reinstall the bushings. Put some grease inside too. The other side. So now I'm going to uh, lubricate the hub to prevent corrosion. You can use, uh, I'm using a fluid film. You could use anti seize or white grease or, or whatever you want. Now I'm just going to clean the, the new rotor here. And clean the rotor down of any residual oils that may be on the brake rotor. You don't want to get that onto the brake pads. They have the residual oils that uh, that is from the packaging and shipment to prevent rust, and so when the technicians or the mechanics receive the parts, you need to make sure you clean the oil off. Otherwise, it's going to contaminate the uh, the brake pads. Install the new rotor. I'm just using an old axle nut and the lug nut so that I don't have to go all the way in. It just it makes the job faster and it, it, it holds the rotor in place for vehicles that do not have the, uh, the rotor screws like on Hondas and, and Kia, Hyundai and all these uh, vehicles. So now I'm going to lubricate the, uh, the mounting bolts for the caliper bracket with some anti-seize. Install the caliper bracket.
tighten the bolts for the caliper bracket. So now we are going to hop over here and then we're going to be spraying some uh, disc brake quiet to uh, prevent noise and this also prevents caliper hopping for the caliper. So I'm going to spray some on the backing of these pads and uh, we are going to wait approximately 5 to 10 minutes for it to uh, dry up. This will absorb any vibration during the braking process when the calipers are moving uh, in and out. So now the brake pads are dried up. I just wanted to show you guys something that when you install the new caliper, uh, to make sure you install the inboard pad on the correct side. So you see the two uh, dimples here so when you install install a pad into the bracket you got to make sure that these two dimples are lined up with these two holes here so it will be like this when the caliper is installed so now we are going to uh, to lubricate the pads with the same caliper grease. Do the same for the other one. So now I'm ready to remove the old caliper out of the way. Just make sure you have everything uh, all ready uh, before you remove this old caliper because you will lose uh, a brake fluid. So you have to do everything fast. So I have everything all set. So once I get this hose out, I'm just going to transfer it over to the new one. So I won't lose as much brake fluid. You know, I'm just going to loosen up the holes now. to spin the caliper out after I get it uh, 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 loose enough.
transfer this over to the new one. Remove the, uh, the rubber. Transfer it over. I'm gonna wash this down with brake cleaner first. There's some dirt on the line. I don't know if the threads are, are messed up a little bit here. Try to get this in now. Trying to be as straight as possible. There we go. Tighten up the, the line while the caliper is out. I'll be showing you the bleeding procedure after that. Trying to get this as tight as possible until the line stops. Now, uh, once you get it all tight and the line stops, you can uh, reinstall the caliper.
So now I'm going to lubricate the slider pins. So tighten the bolts snug. We install the uh, protective caps. I just wanted to to make a note to you guys that the, when you're installing the brake line the flex hose make sure that this is parallel make sure it's not twisted because if it's twisted you will have a brake failure if you don't see that so make sure it's parallel and running down to the caliper straight and it's not twisted in any way shape or form so unfortunately it's supposed to be the other way around because i had a hard time installing the caliper and then the rotor would not move and these two dimples are actually supposed to be on the outside and the one with the spring is supposed to be in the in the inside for some strange reason and i was looking at the old parts and i don't normally see that so hmm, strange usually uh, the dimples are supposed to line up with the the dimples on the uh, on the holes here on the caliper. So now I installed the, uh, the slider pins. Now it moves freely, and the rotor spins. Because before the rotor was stuck, I I swapped the pads over. It was on the wrong on the wrong side. The spring is supposed to be in the inboard, and these two dimples should be on the outboard. For, for some reason it uh, it didn't work that way as it's supposed to because normally on some cars you're supposed to line these up on the holes of the calipers so now i'm going to put a little bit of lube on the uh, retaining clip on the caliper and install it a little bit here a little bit there some here on the clip
come back. There we go. Just want to make sure it's in. You can use like a puncher on whatever you want. Just make sure it's in all the way. Make sure the caliper moves freely after you are done with the, the installation. And the rotor spins freely because if the rotor doesn't spin freely and the caliper doesn't move freely, that's a sign that you did something wrong and you need to take it apart and, and see on, on what's going on. So now we're going to reinstall the parking brake cable. I'm going to apl apply some grease here to prevent corrosion. Then that in case in the future you need to uh, remove the parking brake cable. You want to apply someone on the cable itself here. Now the customer is not going to replace the parking brake cable at this time. He, he said that uh, he, he doesn't use it. So we're just going to leave it like this and uh, reinstall it back into the caliper. Install the parking brake cable back. Shouldn't be too hard this time compared to last time when uh, uh, re re removing it. You all good now? Now you want to clean up any uh, leftover uh, residue and grease that you may have left on the brake rotor. So we want to clean that up. I, uh, I discussed w with the customer about the wheel bearing. Uh, I'm going to go for a road test and assess on how bad it is. Uh, but aside from that, he, he may be replacing the wheel bearing next year, maybe later in the springtime. I'll put some NTCs here. You can also put some uh, grease or what do you call it, uh, fluid film if you want. So now I'm going to be doing the other side. I'm not going to show you the other side because it's the same exact thing. And so after I'm done the other side, I'm going to show you on how to, uh, to, to bleed the, uh, the rear calipers because we open up the lines and so air gets into the system so uh, i'm gonna do the other side and after i'm done i'm gonna show you on how, how to bleed the system out now uh, as you can see here on this i'm on the uh the left rear and this parking brake cable is seized completely i can't pull this out or push this in but the other side is partially seized it's uh, it's binding up but the customer doesn't want to do the parking brake cables at this particular time. Uh, he, he doesn't use the parking brake, so he's, he's just uh, going to leave it for the time being. So now just make sure the brake fluid is topped up and then we are going to, uh, to bleed the brakes. So we're gonna remove the bleeder cap. I'm on the right front. You, you only need to bleed on whatever lines you open up. So I, I open the lines in the rear. 
I replaced both left and right side calipers in the rear. So we're just going to bleed the rear uh, only. I'm using a, a 10 millimeter uh, wrench. It's a, a six point and has the, the, uh, the open end on it. So it doesn't uh, round off the, uh, the bleeders. Or you can use a, a bleeder wrench if you want. So I'm just going to crack this open. Now I'm using my uh, Medivac uh, vacuum brake bleeder uh, machine. So I'm going to be using that. And then after I'm going to be doing uh, the gravity bleed. Um, I don't have anybody here to do the conventional two-man bleed you can do it on your own if you want you can use a uh, a throttle depressor tool or a a brake depressor tool so i have the bleeder open now and just make sure that uh, when you do this that you are uh, topping up the master cylinder at, at all times So once that side is done, proceed to the, the left rear and do the same, the same uh, process. We'll uh, continue to top up the master <laughs> cylinder. So now I'm going to leave the bleeder open and let it gravity bleed. And I'm also going to uh, open the one on the, on the right rear. At, as well and keep them both open at the same time and make sure you are topping up the master cylinder so uh once you're all done doing the gravity bleed close all the bleeders up and uh, have a look at the brake pedal and and, and pump the brake pedal uh, several times and see if the brake pedal is uh, is nice and firm if it's not uh, nice and firm, then you need to uh, to continue to uh, to bleed the system. There's uh, th th that would mean there is still air in the system. So now I'm in the vehicle. I'm going to pump the brake pedal several times until I have a firm uh, brake pedal. So I'm just going to turn the vehicle on to have a feel of the brake pedal. Now if you feel that the brake pedal is low, 
and you want to continue doing the bleeding procedure. So right now I feel that the brake pedal is low so I'm going to continue gravity bleeding. And if that doesn't work, then unfortunately uh, I will have to get myself a, a helper and do the two-man bleed. Or I can use a, uh, a brake depressor or a throttle depressor tool to hold the brake pedal. So now I'm going to top up the master again and then uh, and do the gravity bleed again. Now, uh, <laughs> you could e either use this to hold down the, pr the brake pedal if you're working by yourself, or you can use this uh, <laughs> jumbo uh, screwdriver to hold the brake pedal for you. You just need uh, to move the seat uh, back and forth. Uh, either or works. It's all up to you or, or you can get somebody to help you out. Just remember that your options are not limited. You have a lot of options available. Now if you are doing the, the gravity bleed, you may have to close up the bleeders and pump the brake pedal several times and then go back to opening up the bleeders again and then you might have to repeat the procedure or you can get somebody to help you if you, if, if you don't have a lot of time. Realize that gravity bleeding, it, 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 it takes a while so you, you will have to be patient. That's it for today. If you enjoyed this video and you learned something and you found this video helpful, please like and subscribe to my channel if you're not already a subscriber. And I'll see you next time. Have a good day and take care.